Hello everyone, uh, I'm Bastien, bonjour. I'm product manager for data products at Oviet Cloud, uh, a cloud provider. And in this video, I will uh, show you how to train a uh, Yugin face model such as with 2 uh, from A to Z. And I will split this video in uh, multiple parts. First part, the concept, why uh, and which tool you can use to train a model. Second part, how to set up your environment at OVH Cloud. And last part will be to, to play with the Python code to, to see how it works exactly with Yugin face. So let's start, and again, if you want uh, the links or help, uh, check the description of this video. You will have a Discord link and a tutorials URL. So first part, why do you need to train a model? Um, usually, when you train a model, of course, you need data, you need the model, and you will need power. You have multiple options, but the first one is to use your own computer. If you have a good computer, uh, such as um, a good um, storage space, such as SSD, NVMe, or also GPU, this is the best, because when you train a model, uh, it takes time and resources, and uh, if you don't have a GPU, it will take uh, a few hours. Uh, usually, you use GPU when you want to train a model. It's not mandatory, but uh, it will take less time. So, if you want to use your own computer, you can. You will need to install um, everything, which is uh, Python, a Python environment. Uh, we recommend to create uh, a new Python environment. Then after, we will install PyTorch, Torch Radio, Transformers, datasets. You will set up everything. You can also set up your Jupyter Notebooks if you want to. And you play with your own computer. So, when you will launch resources, uh, it will consume energy, it will consume power, it will consume GPU if you have one. So this is good, uh, this is local, and it is quite simple to use, but yet you will need to have the required infrastructure, which is a good computer. So if you have that, good. Uh, I will not explain how to um, set up your environment. Check the Yugin face documentation, it's well explained, but uh, I will uh, more or less speak about the two other options. First option, computer. Second option is to use a famous tool called Google Colab. Google Colab, uh, it will allow you to have Python environment in the cloud with storage in the cloud, which is Google Drive, and also power uh, such as CPU and uh, GPU, if you have um, uh, the good plan, to play uh, with your Python kernel and to train your models. If you don't know um, the plans to um, to, to Google Colab, I made a, a small sum up in this table. The first pack is Google Colab free. You will have CPU power, but you will have limited GPU power. You don't know exactly how much RAM you will have. And uh, if you close your browser, it will stop your work. And if you run something, it will last maximum 12 hours. And if, uh, uh, if it's more than that, you will be cut. So Google Colab, honestly, I love it. It's famous for good reasons, um, but you have some limitations. If you go in Colab Pro and go Colab Pro Plus, um, you have uh, better options such as GPU, but you don't know exactly how uh, and when you will have GPU and uh, which model exactly. Same um, for the maximum running time. So still, it can be good. Uh, for a few uh, examples and few use cases, but you still have some limitations. Also, Google Colab is uh, available in few countries, but not the whole world uh, can use Google Colab. So it's a good option. Option A, computer. Option B, Google Colab, if you can, and if you want to use it, because honestly, it's easy. Uh, it's easy peasy, and you click, and you play with a Jupyter Notebook with resources. But... Uh, when you want to go in advanced mode uh, with more storage space, real GPU power, and you be confident about the amount of time you will have the GPU power, and uh, unlimited storage space, not such as uh, the drive, it's more complicated to use it, you will have cloud providers. We are not the only one, of course. Uh, you have Amazon with SageMaker, you have Google with Vertex AI, you have uh, Azure with uh, their AI tools, and we have also VH Cloud. Uh, if you don't know us, we are a European cloud provider. It's um, we are one of the, the few ones, and we provide AI tools out of the box: uh, notebooks, 
trainings and also AI apps allowing you to put and deploy your models in production. Why do you use the cloud? Usually, um, it's because as a cloud provider, we have thousands of GPUs inside data centers and you have petabytes of storage space just for you. And the key word here is flexibility. You will create an account, create a project, and inside this project, you will start notebooks. And uh, what you will have is specific and dedicated power resources just for you, and same for the storage space. So you have no limitations uh, over time, uh, over resources. So when uh, you are a company, when you are a freelance and you want results easily, usually you stop using Google Colab and you go to the cloud providers. Um, at OVH Cloud, for uh, this part, I will use AI notebooks and AI training. If you want some ideas, uh, what we can have uh, for the power is one and up to 12 CPU per notebook and one to four GPUs per notebook or per training. Uh, it's NVIDIA V100S, so it's 32 GB of RAM. And uh, there is no limitation over time. You can stop your uh, browser and it will work and you can bring your own docker image if you want to so um, it was about the options now we will see uh, how to create an account at ovh cloud and how to uh, start your first notebook and your first training Okay, so now we will create an account on OVH Cloud and start our first notebook. Go on uh, ovhcloud.com. It should be on your own language. Um, it's based on IP uh, geolock. If it's not the case, go on the top right corner on the small flag, select your country, and if you don't find your country, you can click on the world dollar or the world euro, like, like this, and it will be in English. Uh, if you are a US citizen, uh, it's a bit different. Contact us because um, it's a European company and uh, due to the legislation, it's a, it's a bit different. Once you are here, um, you can go on my customer account. And if you have an account, skip this part. But if it's not the case, uh, fill your first name, last name, email, and create a password. Put real values um, since it's very sensitive to for the loose accounts, uh, put real name, real address, uh, no fake emails, and same for the, for in fact, all the information, we will check everything. So you fill this form, you create an account. On my case, I already have one, so I will use mine. Up, you can secure your account with 2 FA authentication. This is the case for me. So let me put my code up. That's it. I will be logged. Once I'm logged, um, I have access to my dashboard and I have also access to universes. Bare Metal Clouds, basically, it's dedicated servers. Hosted Private Cloud, it's for when you want to create your own um, private cloud, such as VMware, Nutanix, or Anthos. And Public Cloud, this is where we will go. Uh, this is where we have um, a service created um, inside projects like this. This is a project. And inside the project, you have services. And at the end of the month, you will receive a bill uh, for the whole, um, the whole services you have uh, started. You pay per hour or per minute based on your consumption. Two hours of notebooks, three hours of VM, it's based on your consumption. If you are new, usually you don't have a project. And you need to create one like this. It's quite simple. It's a name for the project. Let's put Yugin Face. Sorry like this. If you have a voucher allowing you to test the cloud, um, fill it there. Uh, I created one for me just here. It's usually a, a unique ID. Up, you put your voucher like this. You add the voucher. That's it. You read and accept the terms and condition. And you click on continue. Um, when uh, required, you will have to fill information for payment method. In such case, such as uh, AI challenge, you don't need to fill this information. So I will do it uh, like this and I will blur the video. So um, I will skip this part, but I will do it. For obvious reasons, I will not show my credit card information for you. So 
that's it. My project is not created. A project is a name, an ID, um, and in the left menu, you can create compute, such as instances, uh, storage, block storage, object storage, databases, like any cloud provider, let's say. Of course, Kubernetes clusters. And here you can uh, check the AI products. And at the end, you have project management. If you want to check your credit and voucher, you can go and credit and voucher. You will see the name of your voucher and the initial value and the remaining credits. So it's really useful when you want to check a uh, conception. First thing to do is to create a user with the role AI. So you click on create a user. Here, you put a name. I will put Bastien. And I will select administrator if I need everything. And in our case, I just need, for example, to select AI training operator and AI training reader. I confirm. Now I have a, a user. The username um, is user dash and uh, this, uh, this ID. And the code is here. Again, don't do this at home. I will just copy paste inside uh, a file. Uh, of course, uh, usually you use a password manager, but this is for the demo. I have a user. Now I can create a notebook and access the notebook. Click on AI notebook create a notebook and notebooks are managed notebooks in the cloud such as Google Collab but inside our control panel so I can put a name uh, again I can put some labels uh, to find uh, and to search my notebook more easily and to manage the notebook it's optional I can select Jupyter or VS Code it's up to, to you and I have pre-installed frameworks such as FastAI, PyTorch, MXNet, TensorFlow, Uginface I select the one I want. I will take PyTorch in my case. I can have a restricted access or public access. Be careful because anyone will have access to your notebook. It's good for demo, but uh, that's the only thing. And I will select my notebook resources in Canada, Beauharnois, BHS, or France, which is Gravelin. I will select French for my case. I know this is the interesting part. When you create a notebook, you can put some resources like such as CPU resources or GPU. You can go from one to 12 CPUs, or you can go from one to four GPUs. It's NVIDIA Tesla V100S, which is 32 gigabytes of RAM. Every time you do that, we give you also local storage. So you have resources such as vehicles and GPUs and local storage. I will take, for example, for this one, one GPU. And if you need more storage, you can attach storage from object storage. It's here, just here. You have to create a container before. Or you can attach a Git repository. And we will, inf in fact, clone the repository inside your notebook. I will show you that later. Once it's done, you have a review. And here you have, as you can see, the creation of notebooks here, it's made by UI, but you can do it also with API or command line interface, the CLI. So if you want to create the exact same thing with CLI, it's here, it's OVH AI notebook run with the name, the framework, and the amount of GPU. If I click on create, I have a notebook, which is nice. It's in pending state for now, I click on it. I will have access once it will be in running state. And uh, that's it. It took something like 12 seconds. Uh, I can see also that I have a graph dashboard showing me the, the graph for the GPU and stuff like this. And here, if I click on JupyterLab, I will have access to my notebook. I need to log in with username and password. So I will check again the username and password created before. I can create more than one account if I need to. So I can share my notebooks with some people. And I, I can also log with token. We will see that later too. Once I'm connected, basically, if you know Google Collab or just JupyterLab, it's easy. This is the same. You are here. You have the terminal. You have public access to internet. And you have anything you can uh, create in notebooks, it's here. So it's basically not new. You have your terminal. Everything will run uh, as if you were in, in Google Collab. So 
that's it. You have um, some stuff created by default. So if you want to train a model like this, you can. But still, for speech recognition with your face, you have to install all the requirements, which is the latest version of Transformers, the latest version of datasets, um, Librosa, Jiwer, uh, Torch Audio. So if you want, you can. You just go to an pip install and you install yourself. And the other solution is uh, what if, for example, we created um, a Docker image containing all the libraries uh, needed and we crafted that and you can deploy this uh, Docker image in a cloud provider. I mean, this is exactly what we have done. And this is the second product called AI training. In my case, I will stop using a notebook. So I will stop my notebook. That's it. If I want, uh, I can restart it later because you have a start and stop button, but I will stop it for now. And I will go to AI training. Why I'm using AI training and not AI notebook? Again, it's because it's more flexible because in AI training, let's say this is the same backend, but you can um, automate more easily what you want to do and you can bring your own Docker image. Why we do that? It's because inside Docker image, we are able with the Yugin face uh, team to deploy and to install the, 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 all the libraries needed in the good version and also put some uh, notebook examples. So it's easier to start. Um, when you are here, you can see the home. You have an AI training user, which is the one created before, and you have a button called launch a new job. You click on it. You will find uh, the, same, uh, the same options. You select the region, and here you enter the care image. You can put one provided by your VH Cloud. It's public images. If you click on, uh, on on custom image, you will see where is it. It's on Docker Hub slash OVHcom AI training. But you can also bring your own image. And this is what we have done with uh, Yugin Face. I created in my uh, personal repository uh, a Docker file. You will have the link in the description if you want to where uh, in the Docker file, we installed all the libraries, such as Transformer, Dataset, uh, PyTorch, Audio, and, and stuff like this. So you can go here. You put latest uh, at the end, just to be sure. You can attach object storage. I will explain uh, later how it works. It's easier to, to work like this if you have a large volume of data. You can run Docker commands. If you have uh, parameters uh, and values, to um, to give to your uh, to your Docker image when you start it, for example, the language uh, the language parameters such as fr, uh, de, uh, it stuff like this, and same you can configure your job with a name, the resources, and it's pretty similar. At the end, we give you how to generate this kind of thing. So it's a job. When you run AI training, it's a job, and when it's AI notebook, it's a notebook. If you click on create. We will take your Docker image and we will push it live in the cloud and we will give him resources. In our case, I ask for one GPU, so I will have one GPU. And what you will have inside depends on what is inside your Docker image. So um, it's pretty easy to do uh, since we have done the image for you and inside the image, we also pushed uh, Jupyter Notebooks. So once it will be ready, uh, you will have the HTTP access button. We click on it and you will have access to your Docker. Same, uh, you connect with your your, your uh, uh, user created previously and it will work uh, directly. Imagine now that you want to play with vast amount of data, especially for speech recognition. If you work with um, Mozilla Common Voice dataset, uh, it's not mandatory, but if you work with your own data, your own audio files and stuff like this, usually you have not only a, uh, one gigabyte, it's more than that. So um, the best part for this kind of thing is to take your data and push it in object storage. And we'll take your data once we create a job and we push it near the GPU power. Um, why we do that? Uh, it's to, uh, to, to gain uh, on latency and performance. It's easier for us and easier for you. So you go on object storage and you create a container. Uh, you create a container, a private one. 
you select the container near the GPU power or the CPU power. In my case, it was Gravlin for the GPU in France, so I will select Gravlin. I will put it in private, and I will put it, for example, data sets. I create a container, I will push my data in it, and when I will create a job, the data will be synced with my job, and I will have access to my data as a volume. Um, if I can put it um, uh, in, in a, let's say, graphical way, you are the user, the green part in, uh, in the top. You access with CLI API or web UI to notebooks first. It was the first uh, step in the video. And when you do notebooks, it's uh, Jupyter VS Code, and you have CPU or GPU, local storage, uh, as shown before. If you have AI training, this is very, very similar, but you can put your own Docker image. And every time, in both cases, you have local storage, but if you stop the notebook or the training, you will lose your data, at least if you delete uh, the notebook. And if you want to keep your data, and if you want to avoid the part where you have every time to sync your data again, you can put your data in object storage, from a few uh, kilobytes to uh, to terabytes. And when you create a job, you say, I have data here, sync my data, and we will attach your data near the CPU or GPU power. We'll play with it, it will be a volume. And one, when you stop your job or your notebook, we'll sync back your data inside object storage. So the volume is mounted um, as an ephemeral um, not say uh, ephemeral, but it's a, uh, a temporary storage uh, cluster uh, with uh, SSD and VME uh, performance. So we recommend you to do that. And um, uh, it's very easier when you want to deal with large amount of data. So let's go back to the control panel. I click on access here. I have access to JupyterLab. And once I'm logged, um, we push some file, uh, welcome notebook, where we explain the challenge for Yugin Face, because uh, this video is recorded for the challenge. Uh, we explain the concept of AI tools at OVH Cloud. We explain how to work with data, we, how to install the CLI. So don't hesitate to read it first. And if you want to check uh, if everything is installed correctly, click on the debugger notebook and here we made some few tests so the first one is to check if everything can be imported so torch transformers data sets on file after we print the main information here's the amount of calls the PyTorch version if we have a gpu if transformers is in the right version data set same and some file same and after you can do a nvidia smi to check if you have a GPU, a V100S here with 32 gigabytes of RAM. So perfect. And here it's a dummy test. In fact, it will uh, download um, a Python file and it will run uh, this Python file with specific parameters. Uh, if you are not um, very familiar with that, it's uh, the, the parameters that you can let's say, customize, uh, uh, it's up to you, but here it's with a common voice data set, and uh, it's with a small uh, language and uh, with only one epoch, so it will be run, and if you click on it, you click on play, up. As you can see, uh, the file is downloaded and the Python file is running, and if it's not running, there is an issue, and if it's working correctly, that's good. You are able to train your own model with your own uh, data uh, since everything is working. So if you want to automate everything and work with the CLI, go back to the control panel in AI Training Home and you will have few information here about the command line interface. If you click on details, you will have um, access to the binary file uh, for Linux, Mac OS or Windows. Select the good one. It's a uh, file, you unzip it and you push it in the folder that you want. Uh, on my case, I pushed it uh, like this. I will show you in my screen. Wait for it. Up, just like this. It's a bin folder uh, in my uh, in my computer with OVH AI. Once it's here, you go back to your terminal. Um, 
Then after you need to log in, if you type OVH AI, uh, you will have the whole information here and subcommand. So the terminal and the CLI will allow you to create new notebooks, new jobs, also to play with your data, to upload some data in folders uh, from to, to object storage and so on, and to list everything. In fact, you can do everything with the CLI. Uh, it's much more easier for automation. So first, you have to log in. Up, you can log in through the terminal or through the browser. If you select terminal or browser, it's in fact the user we created previously. Up, let's do it with the browser. They um, detected that I was already logged in the control panel, so I can close it. Once you are logged, for example, if you type OVH AI job LS, you will see the whole job I created, the one who failed, the one who are interrupted, everything you can do that here. And for example, if I want to run a job, uh, I type OVH AI job run, and after I put an image name, for example, the one I created previously, Bastion up OVH Yugging face latest. Up. My job is uh, queued. I have one GPU. So far, it's queued. And if I click on the URL, up, I'm directly uh, redirected to the um, to the interface telling me what is going on, if it's pending, if it's finalizing, and, and so on. So I can check everything. If I go back to the uh, panel here, if I do a job LS, I will see everything. As you can see, uh, I think I, yes, I created, I forgot one letter, sorry for that. That's what is not working. Demo effect, okay, let's go back and create a new one. So my job is in creation step. Again, with the CLI, I can create everything. It took 20 seconds. Again, I click on the Jupyter Lab, and this job is launched through the CLI. It was the same one because it was the same Docker image. Again, I can pass parameters. I can pass uh, folders, subcommand, everything. Usually, you also play with data like this. If you do an OVH data, you will see everything. For example, up and you will have the whole list of examples here. Usually, you take data from your computer and you upload it inside uh, a container. A container is object storage we previously shown uh, in the control panel. We recommend to use some prefix because when you create a job or a notebook and you take data from object storage, if you take the whole object storage and uh, you have a lot of gigabytes of data inside, we will synchronize everything, which is um, uh, let's say bad for performance reason and latency. So use some prefix, so we'll synchronize only the prefixed uh, requested data. It's much more easier. The second thing is to use usually one uh, container for input for the data sets and second one for output. This way we synchronize the right one at the right time and we avoid latency. So don't hesitate to use those commands to upload some data. If you use common voice, you can keep this part. And you can also check all your jobs. Uh, everything will be there. So if I do a job LS, I'll see my job. One job is running today, and I can access it directly with the interface. I can automate everything since I can create some parameters uh, in the command line inter interface. So don't hesitate to plug like this if you want to automate. So we have seen how to create an account, how to start notebooks, how to start trainings, or to attach some data if you want to. And no, of course, don't hesitate uh, and don't forget to uh, stop everything if you don't need to. Again, uh, if you use um, the, the control panel, you will see your jobs are running and so on. If you uh, don't use it, but the running uh, state is here, you will pay for it, or it, you will be uh, uh, at least uh, taken inside your, uh, your budget from the, the voucher. So don't forget to stop your job. And if you want the details, of course, you can check the details. You can access to the resource usage to see the graph uh, for the, the GPU and so on. You can relaunch your job if you want to. You can access the logs if you want to, but don't forget to stop if you want to avoid um, the bill. Up. Now, 
once uh, it's, it's not working, what we will do in the last step is to log inside Yugen face and create the first uh, training. Let's go. Last part of the tutorial, now we will train a model. First, you need an account um, on Yugen face uh, website. So go on Yugen face, create your account. Once you are here uh, in your profile, uh, me, as you can see, there, are, there is no models, there is no data sets. Um, what you will need to do first is to create uh, a token for that, verify your email, and once it's done in access token, you can create tokens in read and write, and you can, of course, uh, show your token. I will, uh, of course, erase and delete this token just after. But copy your token, go back to the environment previously created, uh, go in the terminal and log yourself. So you again face CLI login, up, fill your token, and that's it. Now I'm logged into Yugin face CLI. Um, what I will need to do now uh, first, um, I will check if Git LFS is well installed uh, for large file storage. Sorry. Easy. So it's here. I have the version. So Git LFS is here. The first thing I will now create is to create a repository. I can do it through the UI inside my profile, but I will do it with the CLI. Uh, if you go uh, here, you can create new model, new data set, but let's do it with the CLI since we are logged. So it's quite easy. It's you again face CLI repo create and put a name put a name that we will speak to you and of course to your experiments so something like this the repository is now created if i click on yes in my account so bastien is here so now i can clone my repo inside this notebook and that's it it's just here, but, and it's empty. If I go back to the Yugen Face website, if I click now on my profile, one model is here, Bastien slash XLS AB test, and it's empty. What we need to do now is to go inside this folder. Sorry, up. Once I'm inside it, I will install Git LFS, Git LFS install. Up. Sorry, again, typo, updated, and git LFS initialized. That's it. Now, what we will do, I will, in fact, um, download a file from the official Transformers documentation. So you can face slash Transformers, and you have some example in PyTorch to run some um, uh, uh, here fine tuning on pretrain model. Everything is listed here uh, with examples with single GPU, with multiple GPU. So again, I'm not a data scientist. I will just download and use it. So I check the raw file. It's just here. I will uh, just wget the file. Of course, you can clone the repository. It will be easier. But now the file is here. It's downloaded. The Python file will be run through a bash script. Uh, so that we can pass parameters to the Python file more easily. So create a new file, name it run.sh, for example, run.sh, remove the txt, and inside this file, we'll put again the same um, uh, examples as before. So we go back to the Transformers official documentation, we check what they do, and we will take their um, parameters for single GP. We'll take it. If we do this one, uh, it will take uh, in a V100 approximately one hour and 20 minutes. Um, for this example, uh, I will lower uh, the, the, the test. So first, I will be sure that the picture is just here inside the previously created uh, repository. For the language, 
I will put um, something uh, with less files and so it's, it's, uh, it will be faster. And for, uh, uh, for the model name, I will recommend to use Facebook, but for this test, I will use uh, one created by Patrick from the Eugen Face team, which is really uh, uh, small, uh, so it will be easier. I can, uh, of course, uh, put less epochs, so that will be uh, much more faster. It's just a dummy test again, so <laughs> uh, it's, it's just to try it. You have the run script, you have the Python file, you have all the libraries installed. So now in the terminal, if you do a bash run.sh, the script will be run with everything uh, from your parameters taken. It will download the data here from Common Voice uh, with the language AD. So everything will be done there. And once the fine tuning will be done, the file here will be generated inside this folder. And this folder will be directly synchronized to the Yugin Face Hub. So uh, once it will be done, if we go back to the UginFest website, everything will be there. Of course, if you want to, uh, to to deep dive a bit, check the documentation and check what was done by the UginFest team. Um, you have a lot of parameters to start and uh, Patrick uh, created a lot of files explaining everything um, for a more, let's say, a production grade uh, 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 test. So now it's here. It's inside uh, Yugin Face website. Let's check. Let's go back here. I refresh my computer, and that's it. Bastien slash XLS AB test. I have the model card, which is in fact a, a text file. Files and version, everything is here. And I can do everything um, like this. So now I can even try. So if I do a hello, I do a test, I can compute directly what I've just said. Of course, I'm not speaking the language, uh, so they will not recognize what I'm saying. Um, but uh, as you can see, my model is trained. It's working, uh, trained with fake data uh, on my case, but uh, everything is working properly. And you will be able to, uh, to, to do your fine tuning to improve the community with more languages. Thank you. The video is uh, over. Uh, don't forget to stop everything once done and um, enjoy. Uh, enjoy the challenge. Thank you. Ciao.